Sam and Crenshaw. There, my paternity is the. I am DeMarco Morgan, a proud member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. My name is Chesley McNeil. My name is Sam and Crenshaw. There, my paternity is the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And we do like this. I do! I'm Donna Lowry with Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. So we decided on that day that we would go no other way. We cracked Destination, aka Destination, aka. I am Blaine Alexander. I'm one of the reporters at 11 Alive, and I am also a dynamic diva, a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta. a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I'm Karen Greer. We may belong to different houses, but we're all a part of the same trusted family. We may belong to different houses, but we're all a part of the same trusted family. I love it a lot. is his name. He's a member of the Omega Phi Psi fraternity and they've adopted the atomic dog as their uh, dance. Now let's take a look. Do we have it? Turning on the crowd. Even though Michigan's three and four, the crowd loves this guy. Yeah, we, we have a member of the Omega Sci-Fi. Do we? I've seen that dance. Yeah, do it looked like yeah. Chesley. I've, I've seen you no, do that. No, I have right? tried yeah. to do it badly. Can you, <laughs> can we have some music? Do we have some music? Do we have some music? Do we have some music? Every, every uh, Omega man, if they hear that song, they yeah. can't help themselves. <laughs> Members of the Sigma Tau Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha celebrated the first ever event. They gave away nearly $30,000 in scholarships and donations to organizations like the American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, and Habitat for Humanity. The group also handed out several $2,500 scholarships to high school seniors. The money was raised throughout the year, and members say they just wanted to help others. Our own Tisha Powell, an AKA member herself, served as MC. We've got some breaking news in a deadly double shooting near Richmond High School. Police have now identified the victim. Good evening, I'm Bill Fitzgerald. I'm Candace Burns. New tonight at 6, Shelby Brown is...
It all happened in Delaware County today. Good afternoon. I'm Chris May. I'm Jessica Dean. Right now, a manhunt is underway for the girl's abductor. We do know that Darren Haynes is successful tonight in sending a message. That is true. I'm, I'm, explain, I'm wearing my gold boots. My frat brothers of Omega Sci-Fi were celebrating 100 years today, and I told years. them, I only get one chance. If it's 200 years, I don't think I'll be alive. No. So I'm not. wearing our gold boots, celebrating our manhood scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. Very nice, sir. I know you don't understand, but just say... Congratulations for all 100 years. Just say, be out. I'm sorry? Just say, be out. Be out. Everybody else understands that. Uh This is one of the, pa the, the powerful ways that conversational hypnosis and NLP creates powerful changes in people. Because a neurolinguistic programmer, somebody who understands how the brain actually processes information, can talk to you at one level and be activating you on another. Okay? In, this, in, the, in the context we're in here, it's a very good thing. In the context of the people running the country, not so good. The, the most prehistoric, the most primal, the most powerful part of you is your reptile brain. The Russian sports psychologists call this your paleocortex. Okay? It is the part of you that works in primal drives. Food. <coughs> family. Fighting. Fleeing. fornicating. Okay? It's the part of you that works in terms of primal drives. It's driving the bus. This is why you'll, every now and then you'll, you'll hear me make an off-color remark. It's not just because I want to be vulgar. It's because every time I stimulate the reptile brain, I get 20 more minutes of attention. And I need your attention. I need you to understand this, okay? Wrapped around your reptile brain is another layer. It's called your limbic system or your mammalian brain. This is your emotional brain. This is the part of you that generates feelings, right? There's uh, a subset of lawyers in this country, some of whom I've trained, and they practice a system called reptile. And it's all based on how to speak and present to the reptile brain. And they are winning multi, multi million dollar lawsuits using it. Okay? There's a whole field called neuromarketing, which is all about presenting information in a way that the reptile brain has to respond to. This is Dantalian Jones. Today I'm going to discuss how to use a simple technique called pacing and leading to influence and persuade. This will be one of your greatest tools of mind control. Let's begin by understanding what is the difference between a pace and a lead. A pace is a statement that is true, something all parties would agree to being true without dispute. All of the following statements are paces. You are watching a video. Your eyes are open. 
you're listening to my voice. So all these things are true and can't easily be argued and as a result they are accepted. When you state several things that are paces in a row, the mind of the subject gets into a pattern of accepting what is being said. That's the perfect time to introduce a lead or leading statement. A lead or leading statement is something that you want to be accepted by your subject. It's what you want them to accept without judgment and it's something they could dispute. Now here's the formula that I recommend. Three pacing statements followed by a leading statement. Uh, you are attacking Hillary Clinton for the sexual past and indiscretions of her husband, calling her an enabler. We have a panel of independent voters. They are smart as heck, and most of them don't like it. They see it as a distraction. They see it as hypocritical coming from you, and mostly they see it as potential proof that you may have no real ideas to offer as president. What is your thinking on this line of attack? Well, this is a nice way to start off the interview. First of all, uh, you should congratulate me for having won the race. I thought, you know, at least it'd be a small congratulations, but I'm not surprised with CNN because that's the way they treat Trump. It's the, uh, you know, they call it the Clinton Network, and I believe that. Uh, so, you know, let's Wait, hold uh, on. Let's hold on, Mr. Trump. Right I did congratulate uh, done, you the last time I've we spoke. I said up... congratulations on winning the oh, big yeah, race. Thank, thank you what are you going so to do going so forward? Well but you made the... No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Let's get this off on the right foot. I'm trying to address what you're, you're putting out as a headline. With a, with a question. Uh, we haven't spoken. Uh, last week, toward the end, I was the essentially the nominee of the party. And you start off with this question, Mr. which is not surprising because Mr. Trump, I understand I'm CNN asking you, I'm perhaps asking, a lot better than you do. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, you know what? You're right. Sometimes it's good to restart. Here's the restart. You are going to be your party's nominee by all accounts. You are going to carry the standard for this party. You have said that once you get into the general, people will see what you have to offer. The first thing that you've come out with hot and heavy out of the box are these attacks on Hillary Clinton. That wasn't the first thing I've come out with. You are going to be your party's nominee by all accounts. You are going to carry the standard for this party. You have said that once you get into the general, people will see what you have to offer. The first thing that you've come out with hot and heavy out of the box are these attacks on Hillary Clinton. That wasn't the first thing I've come out with. My first thing I came out with, if you watched, was trade. We're making horrible trade deals. We're losing our jobs. We're losing our manufacturing. It's trade. This is New York's number one news, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, with Liz Cho and David Navarro, and Lee Goldberg with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Now, Eyewitness News, first at four. An 87-year-old Franklin Park resident got a surprise, a defamation lawsuit from the mayor of his village. Her family now demanding answers. Good evening, everyone. At 11 o'clock, I'm Bill Ritter. And I'm Shirley Nellica in for Sade. The family of Louis Mata speaking to... Tonight, 20-year-old Zachary Hayes remains in police custody at a hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. He is charged with Tchaikovsky's murder. Live in the newsroom, Audrina Begas, CBS 2 News. Thing to see, mm. and it's nice. Another yeah. nice-feeling date. Yeah. Another yeah. nice-feeling date. Yeah. All right, Zach, it's me. Following a developing story in Manhattan, the search continues for a Columbia University student who's been missing for more than a week. Her family is coming together in a desperate attempt to find her. CBS 2's Magdalena Doris is live in Morningside Heights this morning morning with the latest. Magdalena. 
Good evening, I'm Cindy Shu. A priest says it felt like a nightmare racing to the church as the intense fire destroyed more than a century of history in just a few hours. CBS 2's Brian Connie Bear joins us live from Chelsea with more on this breaking news. Brian? Hi, with News reporter Lucy Yang on the scene with breaking details. Lucy Back here in our era, Mayor de Blasio is speaking for the first time today since federal and state prosecutors subpoenaed some of his top aides and advisors in a growing fundraising scandal. Only on CBS2, a 12-year-old girl who's in the hospital is bringing out the softer side of a local fraternity house. CBS2's Christine Lazar shows us how the college guys are helping to make her stay a little brighter. Three storm punch this week. The latest system is lingering, sweeping in colder temperatures and getting local washes and riverbeds flowing. Shooting and killing that officer is also hospitalized tonight. That's where Fox 4's Mary Pulley is live right now with more on the investigation underway in the Kansas City, Missouri area. Mary? Yeah, Phil, and as you know, this comes as uh, folks are rushing home during rush hour, making for some very inconvenient detours. Good evening, everyone. I'm Calvin Hughes. And I'm Janine Sandwood. In for Lori Jennings, local 10 News at 5 starts right now. And we're now hearing from other people who know the baby's mother and the circumstances leading up to her death. Local 10's Nikki Mohan live in Northwest Miami Dade with more. Nikki. surrounding Facebook, supposedly stopping conservative topics from its trending list. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis is here. She's going to tell us more. Good morning, Rebecca. That's right, Robin. Good morning. And this is the CEO and founder of Facebook speaking out for the first time. His it is Friday, and that means it's time for Hometown Tailgate. Let's go out to Mark, Kristen, and John at Booker T. Hi there, Kim. Uh, <laughs> She already started. <laughs> we were going. We were on there. Okay. We were we'll see Alexis's beautiful face <laughs> in front of what we call the green screen. Yes, hopefully. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you for trusting Cairo 7 News. We'll see you the next time news breaks and today at noon. Good morning. Just after 9 on Saturday, March 26th, I'm Brittany McGraw. And I'm meteorologist Kevin Benson. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 11. You seem to stay angry for months. Yeah. Was that real or was that strategy? Well, I'm a real person. I don't say, oh, gee, I'm angry tonight, but tomorrow you're my best friend. See, I do, I do have a theory that, you know, when somebody does it, and this could happen again with us. I mean, it could be uh, even doing this particular interview. I have great respect for you that you were able to call me and say, let's get together and let's talk. To me, I would not have done that. I'm tracking a drop in temperatures tonight, but eyes already on our next chance of snow. I'll show you where we have a winter storm watch already issued. She is not the only person killed from a tree branch falling in the same town. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hopkins. Just but if, 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 so. if you think every Fed meeting should be a live meeting, how come the 10-year is only at 1.7 percent? No, because the market doesn't think that. Yeah. Mm. Christina, so you think they might have missed their, their window? Or? Well, certainly it would have been optimal to move earlier. But having said that, it's not too late. Or David. However, even if you can, you can explain those numbers to someone like Bill Gross, we're still dangerously on the precipice here of collapse. New tonight, police say they believe the search for this missing woman has ended in a gruesome way. Investigators say they think someone spread Patsy Hudson's remains throughout Richland County. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Kristen Hartman. And I'm Jared. Work on a huge construction project at the University of Utah is on hold this afternoon following a surprising discovery this morning. Yeah, mystery. That surprise was buried several feet underground, a possible burial site. Begin tonight in Pike County where search efforts today for a missing teenager led to the discovery of human remains. It was a gruesome discovery near a popular driving range. Tonight, Norwich police are asking for help in identifying the body of a young man whose remains were found recently. Uh, well, I can tell you that a man's body was found around 6 o'clock, and I can tell you there is still a criminal investigation underway right now. We are at the corner of Kenwick Circle and Oxford Road, right in front of the Seminole County Library. Channel 11, Shelly Bortz is live now as emergency crews try to get those flames back under control. Shelly. Yeah, that's right. Fire crews have just been called back to the scene. County woman made a shocking discovery over the weekend in her own backyard, and now police are trying to get to the bottom of it. The sheriff's office says a dead body was stashed inside a barrel, and they've charged Robert Wozniak 
with that find. WDBJ7 Shane Dwyer is here with the latest on the investigation. Chris and Jean. If you take the time to watch the hands of people on the news, in movies, on documentaries, on TV shows, etc., you will notice that they very subtly do these following hand signals. In particular, um, you will see the krona, which is where the um, index finger and the little finger are sticking out. Hello. This is Boom Bust, and these are the stories that we're tracking for you today. When someone does that signal, the krona is a sign of the horned disc. This is a satanic Masonic symbol. It is a secret hand signal. Like the book of Proverbs says, that he who signals with the fingers is planning evil. Now let's look at the hand signals. The hand signal on the right hand is doing a symbol which was done by the Nazis and also by Winston Churchill. Um, those of you who thought that Winston Churchill was a, uh, was a hero, well, I'm sorry, it doesn't appear that he was so because there is a worldwide conspiracy run by the Masons and these hand signals are, are what they use to communicate. Hello there, I'm Aaron Aid. This is Boom Bust and these are the stories that we're tracking for you today. Now, this sign here is the sign of the horned disc. It's a satanic sign. So therefore, again, this cannot possibly uh, be Jesus Christ. Um, there's this, this sign is also at the top of Alexander Palace on the uh, female angel. And as you know, female angels do not exist. They are Nephilim. They are an abomination. And here you have Jesus Christ, allegedly Jesus Christ, doing the same sign as an abomination. On the hand, uh, left hand um, on, on, the, on this painting, um, it, look at the positioning of the fingers. That is the Masonic M. And we're back with more from economist Paul Craig Roberts. Now, in the second half of our discussion, I spoke with Roberts about gold, both physical and... ...and paper. And now there's a lot of talk lately. The, 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 the uh, pointing finger, the forefinger, um, is called Finger of Jupiter. And you will see uh, Masons, Illuminati, Pagans, Wiccans, Druids in lots of pictures. You can just look them up on Google yourself, making a one finger point upwards or perhaps downwards. Hello there, I'm Erin Aid. This is Boom Bust, and these are the stories that we're tracking for you today. Hello there, I'm Erin Aid. This is Boom Bust. This is Boom Bust, and these are some of the stories that we're tracking for you today. Starts right now. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> his fate to a three-judge panel, but under oath, Jenkins says his body might have committed these murders, but he says he simply cannot remember them. Now, leaving court today, we heard Jenkins say what he says are words from Egyptian gods, even hearing demands from Luf Lucifer. First up, we're talking about debt. A defamation law. Defamation lawsuit from the mayor of his village. Mayor Barrett Peterson is suing the man because he passed along an email containing accusations the mayor says are absolutely untrue. And that news straight from Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine just moments ago, his office leading the investigation into the deaths of John Crawford and Angela Williams. Both died the night of August 5th. Police were called to that Walmart on reports that Crawford was waving a gun inside. Police shot and killed him after he reportedly refused to drop the weapon, which later turned out to be a pellet rifle. Williams died from a medical condition during the ordeal. And we have left him coverage for you of the late breaking details. We start with Brooke Moore in reaction from Crawford's family.
combined, the officers who shot the suspect have nearly 40 years of experience. President Obama joins the world in mourning the death of Prince. The president called him, quote, one of the most gifted and prolific musicians of our time. CBS 2's Jill Nicolini looks back at the career of a music legend. Rivers died this afternoon, surrounded by family and friends at Mount Sinai Hospital. She was rushed there last Thursday after going into cardiac arrest. <laughs> Her throat. Good morning. Officers recovered bags of heroin and arrested four people overnight, all of whom had possession charges in the past. The NYPD told us it is investigating whether there is any connection between the four people and the drugs found at Hoffman's apartment. I, I, we, it, I just want to play this for you off of my phone. Like I said, it just came in. I'm going to play it for you twice, and you're going to have to possibly turn up your volume uh, to listen. So, so let's try it first. Just a six second file, I'm gonna play it one more time. And you're listening to basically sound recorded from an underwater listening device, a hydrophone. I've been telling you for two years that Islamic extremists are determined to kill you and telling you for months that ISIS is coming for you. There's this one officer that you saw with me who is physically pushing people, the one here to the left with the gray hair, this officer right here, physically pushing people out of the way, one of the older officers. Uh, CNN's Don Lemon is joining us now live from come Ferguson. Us, What's the mood like, come Ferguson? Us, What's the mood like there, Don? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we're about to be arrested because we're standing on the sidewalk and you said you want to... Move out of the way, sir! Move! I'm, uh, I'm not going to resist the police officer, so I'm being pushed back by the police officer. So you can see this is exactly what the citizens have been dealing with. What the citizens have been dealing with. What the citizens have been dealing with. Been dealing with. So, we're going to... Now you see why people are so upset here.